Good day learners, this is Easy Engineering. For today's topic, we're going to talk about the annelids. We love playing with the rain, and sometimes after a rainstorm, we find these wiggly creatures in the mud. Our parents might say, it's dirty, but we still play with them. They are worms. Yikes, right? But what are they really? Are they friends or foes? Let's find out. Earthworms are the classic example of annelids. Annelids are all of the segmented worms. That means they have segments in their bodies like the trains have each car segment. They are long and each segment carries something. They are special because they actually have loads of body parts that are duplicated in each segment. That means each segment can act on their own. If one segment is damaged, some annelids can go on living. Unlike us humans, if we lose a part of our body, we might be in a terrible situation. Fan fact learners, did you know that annelids breathe through their skin? That's because they don't have lungs, and they have a special skin for getting oxygen. So what are their basic features? Well, they are vermiform or worm-like. They are segmented inside and outside. Internal segments are separated by septa or walls. Their division of their body is called metameric segmentation. They move in locomotion like a train does, but instead of wheels. They have two pairs of setae or setae, or hairs made of chitin in each segment. They also have something called a closed circulatory system. They circulate nutrients and compounds through their segments using tubes. And they have a heart too. Some of them live in the soil and sediments. Others live around waters. Usually they are small like 20 centimeters, but some of them could grow from as little as 1 mm to up to long as 3 meters. And you might confuse them for a snake. So what are the kinds of annelids? Well, there are three classes of annelids. The class Polycheta or the bristle worms, they are marine annelids and they are usually hairy. They are less popular compared to others. Next is the class Oligocata or the marine, freshwater, and terrestrial annelids. Unlike bristle worms, they have less bristles. One example is the popular earthworm. And lastly, the class Herodinia. They are also marine, freshwater, and terrestrial worms. One example of this are the leeches. We might not like this one because they could bite you and suck your blood. Fun fact learners, did you know that leeches have 32 brains? A leech internal structure is divided into 32 separate segments, and each of these segments has its own brain. So what do annelids eat? Some annelids prey on other small invertebrates. Some live in tubes and emerge just to grab the prey with their jaws as they pass by, like a tiger waiting to pounce a prey. Many annelids are detritivores. That means they feed on sediments and deposits because they contain very small invertebrates and microorganisms. So how do they reproduce? Depending upon species, annelids can reproduce both sexually and asexually. That means they sometimes find a partner or sometimes they do it alone. But that doesn't mean they're lonely. It only means they do it just because they can. In the asexual or self-reproduction, the posterior part of their body breaks off and forms a new individual. Lumbricolus and Olophorus, for example, are known to reproduce by the body breaking into such fragments. But take note that not all worms can regenerate. In sexual reproduction, hermaphrodite annelids like earthworms mate by copulation. Two worms which are attracted by each other's secretions lay their bodies together with their heads pointing opposite directions. The fluid is transferred from the male pore to the other worm. So the question is are they friends or foes? Well you think of them as icky or dirty or they could bite you or even imagine they could go live inside you which they won't. They are actually a lot of benefits we have on annelids. Rugworms and earthworms are often used by fishermen as bait to catch fishes. 
Some of them are even farmed because their waste becomes a natural fertilizer in the soil for plants. Some of them are grown to be natural food for the fishes in the farm so that fishes grow big and healthy. Even some leeches are helpful too. Well-known medicinal leeches are blood suckers, but instead of our normal blood, they can be put to a position where they suck out our toxic blood only. So learners, now we've learned that annelids aren't just our foes. In some ways, they are our friends too. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Have a nice day.